We haven't talked about Ikea in a long time. Reason being, Ikea is one of those places that only is a good place to shop if you know how to hack it. So in today's video, I'm going to teach you how to make your home look fancy and expensive using Ikea products. These are not DIYs, these are just like the best shopping and design hacks that you can apply that will make your Ikea products look like designer products. So today we're gonna to focus on the bedroom. This is about how to make your bedroom look expensive with Ikea. So when you are choosing a bed from Ikea, you don't want to get the super complicated, expensive stuff. I never thought I'd see the day when a bed from Ikea was $1,500. Ah, 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 that makes me feel old. That makes me feel old and I'm only 27. So I hate that for me and I hate that for all of us. You do not need to get the most expensive bed from Ikea. Frankly, all those beds look like beds you could pick up on Wayfair, Amazon, whatever, whatever, and you might be able to get it for cheaper and you do not have to assemble it because I find that when I order from other websites, they're assembled-ish. Ikea, they're like, hey, do you have a degree in engineering? I hope you do, because if you don't, you're freaking screwed. So that's what I have to say there. But if you are gonna buy your bed from Ikea, get the simplest one, get the mom, get the, the Tarva, get like the basic wood one that you can stain because the reality of the situation is you cover up most of your bed, right? It's covered with bedding, pillows, random stuff. It's covered anyway. So the way your bed frame actually looks does not matter, especially if you're balling on a budget. So don't even pay for that. But the other hack I want you to do is I don't want you to rely on those Ikea slats. The Ikea slats are why people hate Ikea beds. The Ikea, the slats are, if you weigh more than 150 pounds, which I, I, I'm in America, so many of us do, um, those slats cannot hold Hold up two people easily. What you want to do is you want to grab one of like those um, bed bases from Amazon. They're like 90 bucks. Zenith has one, Amazon has one, Homer, I don't care who you buy it from. Use one of those because they work for multiple different beds. You don't need to get a box spring so you're saving money then and it's so much more sturdy. But when you're selecting a bed, you really can't go with a good old-fashioned mom. I will say it's one of the easiest ones to assemble. Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. You don't need any of that additional storage because we can get storage containers and it's very sleek, easy to cover up, easy to dress up, so we're good to go. Next, I want you to skip out on the nightstand. So Ikea has ni nice nightstands, some of them really nice, but they're so expensive and they don't hold much because nightstands are just generally smaller, right? But we're trying to get the best bang for our buck. So instead of looking at those nightstands that don't hold anything, I think you should get one of their dressers. Now, I, I, I am a ride or die when it comes to Ikea dressers. I think that they are the best on the market in terms of affordability. You can drill them into the wall for stability, but the prices are phenomenal. For example, the mom dresser I think is under $200, like the, the smaller version. The Copang dresser is $129.99 a piece. It is a three drawer dresser and I use it as a nightstand and it fits everything. You don't need to paint them, you don't need to stain them, they look good as they are, and just go grab some hardware. Now the one thing I wanna say is when it comes to Ikea, you want to measure those holes because Ikea is always like, hey, everyone is making this five eighths of an inch. Let's make it seven eighths of an inch. I respect the hustle because they have a monopoly and I love that for them. Like I so respect the hustle. So you want to measure before you like replace their items. But I like to find alternatives from Ikea. I think they have really good options. That's what I did in terms of my hardware. But you can also go on Amazon and get something knurled. If you ever want something to look expensive, this is this is the plug right here get it knurled. You're like, what does that mean? It literally just has ridges in it. That for people screams luxury. That really is the difference between like a $5 knob and a $25 knob. They're like, it's knurled, pay more money now. <laughs> really feel that way and that really is the case um ikea has a plethora of rugs they have so many rugs these days they used to have like two rugs the prices on the rugs fluctuate a lot and they have some really good options and a lot of people feel like you don't want to spend a ton of money on a rug for a bedroom because most of it's under your bed anyway and like how are you going to dust it how are you going to clean it so what i want you to do is use like sherpa rugs or cowhide rugs or faux cowhide rugs you can layer them on top of one another under your bed so you get like the long like statement look of a rug so you put one on one angle and one on the other and it creates like this rug effect. I mean, they are rugs, but it creates this big rug effect without you having to buy big rugs. And you really only need one, right? It kind of adds a pop of contrast to your like wood or like vinyl or whatever it is you have on your floor while not requiring you to have like a full rug down because full rugs are expensive. So this is a great way to save money. You can even do that with like the faux like sheepskin things. Like you can layer a few of them and get the look for less. The next tip is not something that I'm going to do in like my little mock-up. So I'm just gonna tell you about it. But if you want to get like really big artwork, 
um, on the low from Ikea. You want to get the Bjorska frames. That's not how you say it. I'm so sorry. The, the big AF periodic table, that, and paint over it, right? You can stretch it and you can put whatever art you want up there. But that's a great way to get very, very large scale art with an affordable frame because I think like the whole package is 150 bucks. And I don't know about you. I don't know if you have purchased art recently, but getting something that size for under $500 is a miracle. It is a gift. Another way you can jazz up your room really affordably from Ikea, make it look luxe, is to backlight everything. Ikea is chock full of LED lights. The Ikea lighting section is the part of Ikea where I feel insecure. I feel like I don't know what's going on. It is embarrassing the number of times I've tried to do like a lighting hack from Ikea and I'm back there like three, four times talking about you guys didn't tell me I needed part Z. Um, I only got X and Y, you know? So Ikea lighting is difficult to maneuver but they do have really great backlighting. They have smart lighting now. Please don't ask me how to set that up because I do not know. You can backlight everything. So behind your bed, you can do like a strip light behind your nightstands or underneath your nightstand, you can do a strip light so that you have that nice move mood lighting and you don't want to use the overhead lights at nighttime, you can do that using stuff from Ikea. And that's a very sophisticated look. Every hotel does this. Every cruise ship does this. And for some reason, the luxury cruise ship is like, that's what I aspire to. <laughs> but to talk more about it, lighting from Ikea, the more luxurious items are the ones that look more like task lamps. So you want to look for things that are really sleek in design that don't take up a lot of space because the lighting at Ikea is actually pretty expensive. My favorite light from Ikea of all time is the Ipperly collection, but I do not believe they sell that anymore. But that's what I would get if I were going to get lighting at all from Ikea. But if you do all the backlighting and another hack I'm going to tell you about in a second, you don't necessarily need that. And I do want to say that Ikea does have a lot of really great plug-in sconces and your sconces don't have to be that sophisticated and Amazon also has tons of really 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 affordable plug-in sconces that you might want to pick those up and pair that with like your IKEA bedroom to get the look for less instead of investing in like a table lamp Next, we want to talk about overhead lighting because we talked about table lighting and like backlighting. But when it comes to overhead lighting, I want you to pick up those pendants. So Ikea has tons of like really cool pendant shades and you can hack these. You can get them, you can attach them to the ceiling with like a hook or whatever. You can get some chain from Home Depot, put it on like that lampshade and you can put puck lights in there. I do this all the time in client spaces, people who like cannot drill into their walls. I screw a hook up there, the landlord cannot see it. The landlord cannot freaking see it. And if they're giving us the landlord paint special they can deal with this itsy bitsy little hole in the wall if your landlord wants to fight with you call me up I'll come fight the battle for you because I'm the one who told you to do this you can really just get like the textured spray paint from like rust-oleum so they have stone spray paint they have hammered brass or hammered gold spray paint I think it is so good it looks so high end when you actually do it I'm doing it in Photoshop right now so it doesn't look as good you can get like a really cool pendant look and what I like to do is like stagger three different pendants at three different heights um and you use all puck lights that are like remote operated they're just like a Bluetooth sort of situation. So you can sync them all together and you have like a nice pendant effect in your ceiling and you're getting a statement chandelier piece that you just DIY'd yourself really, really easily. And of course, let's talk about how to get some luxe looking art from Ikea. So I have always been a hater. I don't think you should buy the prints that everyone is buying though. Ikea does have a good, a few prints that I am really enjoying right now. But what I want you to do is definitely pick up their square frames. So Ikea has a myriad of square frames. They have 12 by 12 ones and they have 25 by 25 ones. I love the 25 by 25 ones. I have them in my entryway. I think they look super high end, even though they are plastic frames, I love them. And what I did is I just got some art on Etsy and here's a hack, like go on Etsy and buy printables. If you're not familiar with printables, you can literally print art for like $8. It costs $8 to buy the art and you can print them at your local store for a few bucks. I've never paid more than $40 to print art and that was me printing like 20 different things in really large sizes. Make sure you have like a Karma extension or a Honey extension on your browser when you're printing things so that you can get all of those coupons from your local drugstore. But what I do is I will buy one set of art and then I'll flip it upside down or like rotate it or something and mirror it on the other side. So I'm only having to pay for that art once. I'm buying all the frames and I'm really drawing the eye upward. Of course you can do mirrors on either side of the nightstand to get a really luxe look but I like the way art looks. And as for another piece of art, um, I am infusing green throughout the space. This is like a neutral modern space. So I got this really large piece. Um, it's a printable. It was literally $8 and 26 cents. So I'm putting this up on the wall and I'm flanking it with sconces. Like I told you about from Ikea before. Again, most of the lighting, especially the cheaper ones are literally made out of plastic. So it's very, very, very easy to spray paint them. So I would just spray paint these to coordinate with your pendants or something like that to get a sophisticated look. Now to round out this bedroom, you definitely want to have some type of accent seating. So I believe the chair is around like a 
100 bucks, maybe it's 69 bucks, and it comes in many different colors. I wanted to tie in the green. A way you're going to make your Ikea stuff look luxurious also is just by layering different colors and textures. I think something that happens with Ikea all the time is people just will buy a set of something. They'll buy all the mom stuff, they'll buy all the Brimness stuff, all the Copang stuff, whatever. You want to mix and match from different collections. You want to mix and match like colors and textures and fibers. And you want to do this no matter where you're shopping, because if you're shopping in a super high-end store and you're not mixing all these things, your stuff still isn't going to look as high end as it could. So I'm going with this accent chair. I'm going to put a brown throw pillow on it because I have brown not only in my rugs, but I'm also going to use it for my bedding. And honestly, I wouldn't really buy their bedding because you can get bedding cheaper elsewhere, but I really do like their dye tag collection. I think their stuff, like it's really nice linen. They have great colors and I'm just doing a normal bedding arrangement. So I'm doing three accent pillows. I'm doing something brown and cream, pulling textures I already have in the space with a texture and a tassel. Then I'm going in with like the dye tag shams that come with the duvet cover so it's a set and then at the base I'm going to repeat that green again that I have otherwise in the room and in plants because you definitely pick up plants from Ikea because they're super cheap um, just so that the space feels really layered and sophisticated and cohesive and while the room we've built together is finished I do have a few more hacks that you can use to make your Ikea look sophisticated so one instead of getting like the basic Ikea curtain rods which I honestly do think can look super nice you actually want to get this curved rod so I actually used it in my bathroom as like a towel rack but it looks super industrial and looks super high and you can rub and buff it any color to get a luxe look but this is a great way to get an elevated curtain look and when it comes to curtains it's all about hanging them high and wide the higher and wider you go the more luxurious they're going to look baseline period I really don't think it really comes down to how expensive your drapes are I think it comes down to how you hang them another way to elevate any Ikea pieces if you got something that was open or a bookshelf or something like that for your bedroom if you needed additional storage is to get these stoppers I think you would get them from Ikea and also Amazon but they fill all of those holes in the Ikea products so that it doesn't feel like empty and expansive and unfinished and I think that is kind of the problem with Ikea sometimes it looks unfinished and therefore it doesn't look luxurious but if you're filling those holes I think it helps you get a more well-rounded sophisticated look but you can achieve a luxurious look from Ikea and today I hope I showed you how to accomplish that let me know what your favorite hack was from today's video and let me know if you want a living room or a kitchen version I have so many tips and tricks that I can impart onto you on how to hack Ikea to look as sophisticated as possible if you like today's video please don't forget to subscribe like this video and check me out on instagram and until next time have a beautiful day